It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS AM 1160 and 101.1 FM. And this is Indiana in the Morning presented by First Commonwealth Bank. Time now for another interview presented by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. A lot of things going on at the Office of Planning and Development. And joining us now to talk about it is Byron Stauffer. Byron, good morning. Uh, good morning, Josh. How are you? Doing fine. Glad you were able to take time out of a, what seems to be a very busy schedule for the Office of Planning and Development to join us this morning. A lot to talk about. One of the things, though, that we did want to talk about was, of course, uh, the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, known as REGI. I'm sure you heard about uh, Representative Jim Struzzi's bill passing the State House on its way to the Senate, which would require legislative authorization before Pennsylvania can impose a carbon tax or enter into any multi-state program like REGI. So talk about it from your perspective in the Office of Planning and Development. How important is that 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 bill has now made progress in the State House? Well, thank you, Josh. Um, Obviously, the Indiana County Commissioners, the Center for Economic Operations, have um, been working very closely with our legislative team and certainly have identified uh, Reggie is one of the threats to our local economic base as it pertains to um, energy and coal, um, you know, some of the bedrocks of our economy. Um, you know, certainly these things are, uh, you know, we're, we are seeing the natural um, market conditions uh, erode some of that, but uh, we certainly need to protect uh, those jobs. And, and, and that quality, um, we're certainly concerned um, with the energy strategy as part of that and the negligible economic, or rather, excuse me, the en- environmental impacts. Um, some of the analysis that we've seen that if some of our power plants were to close as a result of this carbon tax um, and this tax on electric uh, generation, that we will see um, those investments um, go further west into other states and, and that air will um, come back this way um, naturally as well. So it's a negligible uh, and, and a, uh, environmental impact, and, uh, but it's a significant economic hardship uh, that this county will endure having the, uh, uh, the four power plants um, in, in the region here. Mm-hmm. It would mean a loss of property taxes, I would imagine, for the local governments, the loss of jobs uh, for the area, and that would be another uh, hit on the taxes as well, as I could imagine, plus the fact that it would kind of have a domino effect and to some of the secondary and uh, tertiary jobs, the, the outlying jobs, kind of like uh, the grocery stores or the restaurants or things like that. Well, yeah, every, these are good-paying jobs, and, and, and it's not only the direct jobs, but it, as you mentioned, it's certainly the indirect jobs, it's the boilermakers, and it, it's the other union operations that service these plants, we're already seeing disinvestment uh, in these facilities um, with, with scheduled, uh, you know, maintenance not being, not happening and, and those kinds of things. But every dollar that comes in, um, that's less, less of a dollar that gets spent on our main streets and our downtown businesses and our family businesses. So, um, so it is certainly a ripple effect. Um, very, uh, very pleased to have seen the bipartisan support of Representative Struzzi's bill. Uh, there's a companion bill in the Senate um, that uh, Senator Pittman has uh, pending as well. And so I'm sure that uh, these two uh, bills will come together uh, at some point, and we're looking forward to uh, supporting that. And, uh, you know, we've done what, what we've, uh, we, we've done a, a virtual press conference on the matter, mm-hmm. uh, participating in all kind of, uh, you know, Zoom calls and, and meetings. Um, to try to uh, you know make sure that we're uh, addressing the issue head on, um, both politically and um, and again from an economic uh, standpoint. Certainly, our school districts, as you mentioned, are going to be uh, pummeled as a result of, of this, and um, so they've been uh, very much at the table as well. So, so thanks for giving me the opportunity to chime in on that. Mm-hmm. It's a very important issue and one that is certainly going to. Uh, going to continue on for the next uh, couple of months, I would imagine, as this continues to progress through the state legislature. Let's go down to the local level now. The, we've we dealt with the macro, now at the micro level. Um, there's going to be some help for businesses, as I understand it, who have been affected by COVID-19. There's been an extension of uh, one of those uh, aid programs, if I if I heard correctly? Yeah. Uh, the uh, Everyone um, 
you know, through the CARES Act, uh, has heard about the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, that was originally scheduled to uh, to sunset at the end of uh, July, uh, I believe, with an action of the president. Um, the Paycheck Protection Program uh, application period has been extended to August 8th. And so uh, that application is available on the uh, Small Business Administration's uh, website. And uh, so uh, pretty easy if you Google Paycheck Protection Program or Small Business Administration um, or get on the website for the Indiana County Center for Economic Operations. Um, there, there's links for all these and uh, as well as, um, you know, through the Paycheck Protection Program, you, you very easy to go to your local bank and uh, make application there as well. Um, the uh, most recent program has been the Main Street grants uh, offered through the Commonwealth. Um, these are also CARES Act funds. Uh, these are being uh, administered through uh, CDFIs or Community Development Financial Institutions. Uh, we have uh, two in the region uh, that would service Indiana County. There are others, but these are probably the two main ones and they would be Bridgeway Capital. Uh, BridgewayCapital.org is the website address, and the other one would be the Progress Fund, um, uh, ProgressFund.org. And uh, basically it's an online application, um, but any business that has any trouble um, um, making an application, uh, I know broadband's still a challenge mm -hmm. uh, for some, but uh, they, they can call the Center for Economic Operations at 724-465. 2662, and um, we can certainly provide assistance either through the uh, Small Business Development Center, uh, through the Tourist Bureau, through the Chamber of Commerce, and certainly through the um, uh, Indiana County Office of Planning Development. Any of our affiliates of the CEO would be glad to assist any of these businesses for the, to apply for these Main Street grants. But if you apply directly through a CDFI, either the Progress Fund or Bridgeway Capital, and there's a common access portal. So no matter which entity you go through, you're going to end up in the same application portal. But we're, we're glad to assist, and we certainly want to capture as much of those funds as available. Um, there's as much as $200 million, uh, available to, uh, to small businesses. And um, most businesses, I think you have to have uh, revenue less than a million dollars. And um, and so these are truly dedicated to the small small businesses uh, in the county and in the state. You mentioned one word that just perked, I think, everybody's interest, and that is broadband. And I know that the C that the Office of Planning and Development has been working with the county commissioners to try to get some broadband set up in some of the underserved areas. Maybe you could talk about some of that recent progress. Yeah, this has been a, a longstanding issue that prior boards of commissioners have identified. Um, you know, Commissioner Keith. Commissioner Gorman, Commissioner Hess, along with uh, uh, Senator Pittman and Representative Struzzi, have all been collaborating here. Um, you know, in the last several months, it's this issue of broadband has certainly been exacerbated um, by the COVID uh, pandemic, and so um, you know we've been hearing from our school superintendents and school board members and parents and businesses. Uh, telehealth matters, uh, people that, that need to talk to the doctors remotely, um, and, um, and, and certainly uh, teleeducation, um, you know, and online education is, is, is a big, big issue, part of it. So, um, so we, we do have uh, several grants pending um, uh, through the state. We have a $500,000 grant that the commissioner has applied for. Uh, we also have a $1.5 million federal application uh, pending, and um, I believe the county uh, commissioners uh, will be identifying some of the CARES Act money towards broadband, which is one of the 10 eligible criteria. Mm -hmm. And uh, already uh, the commissioners have awarded uh, two contracts, uh, approximately $300,000. Uh, there'll be a fiber optic build. Um, extending the previous investments that the county made as part of the radio communications project. Um, and uh, we'll extend, I think it's uh, six or eight miles of uh, fiber into the Brush Valley area. And so there'll be several hundred uh, customers, uh, potential broadband customers along that direct fiber build, as well as um, basically a, a big Wi-Fi antenna. And so uh, the last mile delivery for a lot of people will be 
wireless. Uh, it's just cost prohibitive at this juncture. So we're trying to very quickly deploy broadband where we can. Um, and um, wireless seems to be the, the, the best way to do that um, in the short run. Um, and as technologies improve, you know, we'll, we'll continue to explore those types of things. Uh, but, you know, we're hopeful to get, you know, hundreds and hundreds, if not close to a thousand plus uh, rep businesses and residences as part of this Wi-Fi in, in uh, Brush Valley. And then um, there's an existing fiber optic line um, that the county has in Green Township. Mm -hmm. And so we'll also be deploying a, a wireless uh, broadband signal up there with new equipment. And uh, this will be through Saul's Giver, um, and, uh, which is uh, currently a, a, the a firm that provides services to our radio communications for first responders, fire, and the network that the county already has. So we're expanding that network to, uh, to go to residences and, and businesses. Uh, so it's a very reliable system. And, um, and then we're, we're looking, uh, we're actually in the process of engineering and, and designing uh, additional uh, broadband uh, locations uh, for this uh, fiber and wireless expansions and we're also reaching out to existing companies uh, that have service and um, you know and entering uh, starting to enter into conversations uh, about expanding uh, existing uh, services elsewhere in the county with with other companies as well so yeah uh, so we're, we're trying to do this on a diversified basis we're not putting all our eggs in one basket. We're trying to reach out and partner uh, with as many businesses that want to do business here in Indiana County and, um, and, and do these public-private partnerships. All right, Byron, we, we're up to the mark here, but we do want to thank you for joining us. We want to you know, talk to you about some of the other things. Maybe we can schedule some time uh, in the next couple of weeks, maybe some other things that are going on with the uh, Office of Planning and Development. But again, thanks just, for joining us this morning. Quick, I'll, I'll jump off here, but we got the Big Idea Contest Oh, that's up. right. Yeah, the Big Idea Go for it. Yeah, we got that coming up. So get on our website or give us a call at the CEO or the county planning office. Uh, so we have up to fifty thousand dollars for entrepreneurs that want to have business, you know, start up uh, business opportunities. Uh, the county has uh, low interest loans for working capital, so I would encourage businesses that may have already gotten an idle or a PPP and still need some working capital. The county has very patient loan funding. Uh, that we can help businesses uh, that may need to diversify their their um, their business. Some and glad to work with them. And then, lastly, don't forget your census. Please respond to your census. It's so very important. All right. Thanks again, Byron, for joining us. All right. Very good. Thanks, Josh. All right, Byron Stoffer, the Office of Planning and Development on Indiana in the Morning. When most other dealers are running out of cars due to the factory shutdown, TriStar Autry shutdown, TriStar Autry shutdown.